Hello, 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 and welcome to part four of my thousand day series. Don't freak out just yet. We're still in Louisville. Got way too much stuff to wrap up here this time. So let's get into the shameless plugs and get those out of the way early so that I don't have to hope you're still here at the end of the video. Discord link is down in the bio. Go check that shit out. We have like 400 members at the time I'm writing this, and we do weekly community events, which everyone on my Project Zomboid server is able to access and be a part of. I also stream most weeks, either Fridays or Sundays. If you've seen any of the Friday streams, those are typically when we do the community events that I just mentioned, so you should definitely come hang out with all of us. It's a blast. All right, that's enough of that shit. Let's go get into this. Starting off on day 301, I wanted to spread out from the mall a little bit, so I found this mechanic shop on the other side of the city and decided to turn that into a makeshift forward operating base. I spent most of the day clearing out the immediate area so that I could set up shop. I also did some quick searching and noticed a car in near perfect condition, which was pretty cool. Because I brought almost no gear with me, I spent the rest of the day just loading up the car with everything I need to fortify the forward operating base and get some work done on the mechanic skill there. To preface, you're going to hear me mention forward operating base a bunch of times in this video, so to save myself some hassle, I'm just going to refer to it as the FOB from this point forward. Starting off part 4 in perfect fashion, my car stalled while on the way to the mechanic shop, and I was forced to ditch it in the middle of the street. This is almost exactly what happened in the beginning of part 3 when I got to Louisville, so I thought that was pretty funny to start off both episodes in a similar fashion. I took the opportunity to work on my baseball skills and got to work burning through the hordes that had started to gather near the cars. I'll take a second to go through the map notes now because I can see how it looks a little jumbled and confusing. So safe means generally cleared of zombie groupings. There's still individual zombies potentially in the area, but no real threats are in these zones. I marked the horde zone with question marks around the area that I lost my cars in since I knew there was at least one large horde and one smaller horde in the area, but didn't have the full scope of how many pockets were forming or where they would be moving to day to day, so I figured it was just easier for myself to plan this out this way. This is going to be a great opportunity to hit some dingers Hepatitis, see you later. and burn off a couple extra calories since the game felt the need to fat shame me. Are those candy corn Oreos? Over the next few days, a couple small things happened that I'll walk through now. Stop myself from spending like two hours each day running out to the horde zone and then back to base. Decided to set up a small camp in a zone that I had already cleared out last episode. The only issue was that I was pretty close to the horde zone and could pull back zombies with me if I didn't lose them before retreating. Aside from that, it was business as usual. Wake up, eat, go to town on zombies for most of the day, head back to camp when I was tired, rinse and repeat. Well, until day 306 at around 10.50 a.m. when I got ambushed, but at this point, it's nothing new and I've become a little desensitized to it. On day 307, I finally managed to fight my way back to the cars and deliver them to the mechanic shop FOB. I spent the rest of the day clearing out the area and attempting to fence in the shop, which ended up taking way too many resources and I gave up on that pretty quickly. Day 308 was much less exciting. I spent the entire day driving back to the main base to drop off some loot and then spent the rest of the day tailoring and prepping to bring some gear and, and more firepower to the, to the fob. Alright, I think subconsciously I wanted to just get this bit out of the way early, but also it wouldn't be an entry if I didn't absolutely annihilate a vehicle. So channeling Paul Walker's inner essence, I totaled my car and had to continue the rest of the journey on foot, which in turn brought a horde to the fob which I would need to take care of. I spent the majority of 310 fighting my way back to the wreckage and grabbing the gear that I was planning to bring along initially. After that, I took some time to clear out the immediate area so that I could work without risking a jump scare every couple minutes. By that, I mean I was immediately jump scared the next day when a zombie snuck up on me while I was working on my mechanic skill. Best thing about this is it took like 20 minutes to kill because I was too exerted to dish out any real damage. Days 312 and 313 were spent working solely on my mechanic skill. I would go through and remove all the items before reinstalling them. I found myself in the parking lot of the shootout from part 3, working through each car I came across. I'd also collected something like 50 light bulbs, so I spent time adding and removing those from cars as well. 314 was kind of a wash, nothing crazy really happened. 
I made it back to base early in the morning and slept for most of the day before driving back out to the FOB. 315 was also super boring and kind of a waste of a day. I basically just sat around all day trying to fix my sleep cycle so that I wasn't getting tired at 11 a.m. and then waking up at 2 a.m. every day. Spent all of day 316 clearing out the buildings to the east of the FOB. It was pretty cool since I hadn't really seen any of the shops in the area yet, or a lot of the apartment style buildings, so it was nice to get to explore a little bit, especially in an environment like the far side of the city a ways away from the mall. Three eighteen was a day for more exploration. I didn't go crazy with it, just visited some sites to the left hand side of the fob, but I did level up my short blunt skill. A lot of today was more for my own sanity of being able to mark the area as safe and not have to worry about a horde grouping up out of nowhere for me. 319 was dedicated to sightseeing around Louisville. As I mentioned a couple times, I haven't really taken the time to explore LV and hit any of its POIs, so today I decided to visit the football field, which wasn't super exciting because we're almost a year in at this point and nature has reclaimed the entire field and much of the surrounding area. After leaving the football field, I made my way to a pretty cool mansion and even had thoughts of relocating here for the remainder of the episode, but quickly shot it down after I had a PTSD flashback of what happened just trying to get to the fob, but maybe in another playthrough. On day 320, I decided to finish up the mechanics level I was chipping away at. It took the majority of the day, but was worth it to finally make some progress. The only thing worth noting on 321 was that I drove back to the main base to drop off some loot that I had gathered while at the FOB. Also gave me an excuse to get back and read the next mechanics book, which I spent all of day 322 doing. Day 323 was the birth of one of my dumbest but necessary ideas yet. So while I was exploring the surrounding area and fighting some zombies, I decided to test ways to grind my first aid skill. Now obviously I couldn't just run into zombies and hope I wouldn't get bitten, that'd be literal suicide. Now I could dig furrows with my bare hands and, and scratch them up that way, but that's boring and you can only scratch your hands which kind of limits your XP and the ability to do anything else. Then it hit me, quite literally in the form of a deep wound. If I happened to shatter a window, then climbed through it naked, I could scrape myself up badly enough just by hitting a key on my keyboard. On day 324, while exploring below the mall, I found an Ox radio station and got to explore it for a little bit before attracting some unwanted visitors. After fighting through a couple clusters, I went back to the radio station and uh, may have went a little overboard with the first aid training. Day 325 was just spent trying to recover from my wounds as fast as possible. Spent stuffing my face and slamming some sleeping pills before crashing on the bed. On day 326, I made my way all the way out to the baseball field to see what the hype was about. I tried clearing out the zombies in the area, which led to me retreating into the stadium, because no one goes to baseball games, and up into the nosebleeds where I was attacked from behind by Seth Rogen. <laughs> After that, I managed to pull off the best juke I think I've ever attempted in PZ. I'll just let it play out real quick for you all. Fortunately for me, I hit excessive exertion and had to walk all the way back to the base, which was a feat in and of itself. Since it took me so long to get back to the base the previous day, I woke up later than I would have liked. By the time I got into the car, it was way too late for me to do anything cool, so I just went back and did some tailoring and worked on some other skills to pass the time. So here's the thing. I can't fucking stand baseball. It is the most boring sport in the world to me. You can already see the comments coming in like, well, you just don't know what a real sport is, and it's America's pastime, man. Shut the fuck up. No one likes your stupid ass sport where you can't even start a damn season on time. It's literally the only sport in the world where you can be completely out of shape and still get paid to be a boring piece of shit. You think we want to win? Then we have to keep playing this boring game. Yeah. Uh -huh. You hate this game too? Anyway, I have way too much bourbon to do nothing with and a couple of you can already see where I'm going with this. Needless to say, this is my favorite moment of the episode.
Call it karma for burning down the church last episode, or maybe the Indy Stone team just loves baseball, but either way, I walked outside on day 329 to a thunderstorm which basically ruined my plans of burning down the baseball field. I figured if I can't burn down a stadium, I might as well go work on my long blunt some more. Day 3.30, I found myself back in the baseball field ready to give it another shot. One thing I forgot about is that the rain obviously can't put out the fires inside the park. So while the exterior fires were put out, the fires inside the ballpark kept going. Because of this, I was able to use the zombies still in the arena to spread the fire throughout the entire stadium. Looks like my plan would work out after all. Day 331 was tailoring focused. After hitting level 2, I spent the majority of the day reading the next book in line. After that, I made a bunch of soup. Soup. because I figured it probably wouldn't hurt to put some time into cooking as well. Day 332 saw me clearing out some apartments and an office building downtown. Nothing too crazy, just wanted to explore a little bit more and this gave me the perfect excuse to do that while also leveling my combat skills. On day 333, I tried my best to keep working on my melee skills, but when a horde starts to accumulate, you gotta act quick or risk dying for being an idiot. And after getting fed up with trying to swing a baseball bat into a mass of zombies, I ran home and grabbed the shoddy. Anyway, I started blasting. Bam. I wasn't getting anywhere with the shotgun, which was kind of shocking to me because they are arguably the best type of weapon in the game, but I don't know. Maybe it was because I had too much ammo to know what to do with, or maybe it was because it seemed like a cool idea, but I broke out the LMG to tear through the horde. This is one of those cases where guns just weren't doing the trick for me. Effective, yes. Efficient, eh, not so much. But basically two pathways here. I could hang out around the base and wait for the hordes to move out of the area, take a couple days, but... Who knows? I could take it into my own hands through uh, other methods. I think we all know which option I chose. Now, obviously this ruins all of the loot on all of these bodies and I, and I get that, but I really just don't fucking care. I had more loot than I knew what to do with at this point and after burning down the neighborhood, I couldn't care less. Yeah, I ended up clearing out a smaller horde with a shotgun and discovered the electronics store, so that was pretty cool. And on day 336, I cleared out some of the stragglers hanging around before spending the rest of the day just disassembling stuff in the electronics store. Kind of a nice little break in between combat sessions for me. Day 337 was another boring day spent doing general maintenance around the base. Things like cleaning up the storage room and reloading all of my mags. Really nothing special. Day 338, I went exploring through some more apartment buildings. One thing to note was I found a window store and took one back to the base with me so I could work on first aid from the safety of a mall rooftop, which was right next to all my medical supplies conveniently. You couldn't tell where this was going. I spent 339 just climbing through the window to work on first aid more. Oh, I also messed around with painting for a little, but was kind of annoyed because all you could really do is paint symbols. I'm sure I'm probably just doing something wrong here, so if you know something that I don't know about painting, uh, leave a comment, tell me what I'm doing wrong, because I was really hoping to paint my entire base a nice bright pink, and uh, you can't do that as far as I know how to. So please let me know if I'm, if I'm just messing something up here. Day 340 was more exploring and sightseeing. I went down to the pier and just checked out some of the buildings and admired the view. I fought a couple zombies, but again, nothing really crazy happened. Continuing the expedition to find cool shit, I stumbled upon the COVID house, or toilet paper house, whatever you want to roll with. But seriously, I don't know if it was just a bug with loot spawn, or if it was intentional and a hilarious gimmick, but the house was loaded with toilet paper. Literally every cabinet and drawer had rolls on rolls of toilet paper, and I thought it was the funniest thing in the world. Definitely not what I was expecting to uncover while strolling through the city. Day 342, I found myself at the movie theater. I did the only logical thing that I could think of and tried to purchase. Tickets to the SpongeBob movie! <laughs> Apparently the staff didn't like that, and I spent the rest of the day dealing with the bubble blowing double babies that just ran at me screaming. Goofy, goofy, goober, goober, yeah! Okay, so, gotta explain this real quick. If that didn't wake up some deep, fucked up, repressed memories of that movie for you as a kid, I'm just gonna say it, guys. You're a dork who probably never got to have scented markers as a kid. But me and my wife were living our best adult life, you know, going to bed at 7pm and shit like that. But instead of going to sleep this time, we flipped through Paramount Plus, 
This isn't a sponsor, by the way. Fuck them. Give me your money. And found the OG SpongeBob movie, which I actually have a VHS tape of. And yeah, that's how old I am. That's some hardcore boomer material, guys, I know. But moving on. We found the movie and watched all of it. And I just sat there through the entire movie and thought, I need to put this in the video somehow. And I don't care how I get it in here, but I need to fit it in. So yeah, moving on. I think the trend of this episode is waking up late because this is like the third time it's happened so far and I promise it's not the last. But anyway, I woke up late and decided that instead of doing cool things, I'd just hang out around the vicinity and clear out some nearby zombies with the M16. Spent most of day 344 just working on mechanics and souping up another car to drive myself around in. Realized it was time for me to take a break from gardening since all of my crops just kept dying. For some reason, I just couldn't remember when I needed to harvest my crops this episode. So every time I went up, they would just be dead and it really just wasn't worth it to me at this point. Oh, I also finally brought in the popsicle freezer that had been sitting in my trunk for like a hundred days. At 345, I spent the morning just disassembling that giant line of TVs that I had created over a hundred days ago. Spent the rest of the day just trying out fishing with actual gear and not just a spear this time, which was so much nicer since I could actually catch shit. So I know I haven't spent much time fishing since part one, but this is around the time that 41.66 came out and I heard that they were reworking fishing to be more of a mini game. And after watching the destruction of foraging, I really didn't want to go through that again and decided it was going to pound out as much fishing as I could and hopefully max it before build 42 made my life way more difficult than it needed to be. Anyway, spent all of 345 and 346 fishing. Whenever I ran out of bait, I just grabbed a shovel or a garden hoe and dug furrows to dig up some worms to use. On day 347, I noticed I'd hit fishing level 2, which must have happened on day 346. So I spent the day just reading fishing volume 2 and gathering more worms for bait. Days 348 and 349 were spent fishing. I know, super exciting stuff. Oh, I also started planting a massive garden of potatoes. But hang with me on this one because I have an actual use for them this time. And I know I just said I was done gardening for a while, but we're back. On day 350, I finally had to face the fact that my freezers were full of fish and I had nowhere to put anything else. So I decided to try my hand at cooking. Mmm, so good and tasty. That went about as well as you'd expect, given that I forgot that the oven I was using also had two sides and ended up burning six pots of food. So... I think now is a good time to talk about the structure of this episode. With this series, I basically go through and create a storyboard that's organized almost down to the day, full of ideas, building plans, base ideas, all that fun stuff. Well, for part four, I had around 85 days worth of ideas planned out and structured, starting with that FOB that I haven't even mentioned in like a month. That's because I realized that the moment I actually followed the storyboard for this episode, the game got incredibly boring and I basically just scrapped the entire storyboard about 10 days in, which explains why everything feels so random and chaotic, at least to me. Hopefully it doesn't to you, or if it does, hopefully it's still entertaining enough for you to find some joy in, but a lot of what you're watching is just me doing whatever the fuck I most felt like doing at the time, which has brought a lot of enjoyment back to grinding my skills. All right, enough of that. Let's get back into the funny stuff. Day 351 started with the fuel run. I usually don't show these because nothing worth noting ever happens and it's usually just me running here, fueling up, and dipping back to base, but fuck it, it's here now and it's staying. On my way home, I decided to stop by the movie store to pick up some uh, special VHS tapes. Spent the rest of the day just watching some of the movies I got a hold of. Spent the morning of 3.52 just watching movies until I realized that I had hit cooking level 6 at some point, in which case I went down to the bookstore to find the final two cooking books. After searching through the entire bookstore, I could only find volume 4, which kind of sucked, but at least I had that. Oh, and I also grabbed the rest of the trapping books as well. I wrapped up volume 4 around 3.30 the next morning. Woke up late, again, on day 3.53, and decided to just spend the rest of the day fishing more. Told you it wasn't the last time. Sorry guys, I gotta get in one of these while I can. Spent the entire day cutting down trees for something that you'll get to see tomorrow, but until then, enjoy this mini montage of me cutting down trees and sawing them into planks.
Now, I'm not sure why I chose this time to start it, but fuck it, let's get into it. Building off of the wood I collected yesterday, I built enough traps to feed Ethiopia for a fucking week. The goal was to set enough traps that I could power level my trapping skill within a couple days. Kinda seeing the pieces come together. About 50 traps, a few hundred potatoes, we're moving boys. Now, I'm not sure if trapping works up here, similar to how foraging doesn't really work up here yet, but I'm giving it a shot. Kicking off the morning of 356, I drove out to check on the traps. I got a couple hits, but nothing crazy, like all the crates or anything like that. Realizing I drove all the way out here and forgot potatoes, I had to drive back to base, grab food, and then drive back to the traps to rearm all of them. After that, I didn't really have any plans, so I spent the rest of the day just stripping down to my Hooters outfit, throwing myself through a shattered glass window to work on my first aid skill. After scratching myself up, I decided to drown out the pain of being alone by laying in my bed and slamming bourbon until I was utterly shit-faced. On day 357, I woke up hungover and decided to do some tailoring, then checked my wounds. After that, I rearmed the crate traps, but checking the crate traps is kind of becoming the new morning routine, so to save you guys from having to hear about it every day, I'm just not going to mention it anymore unless something cool happens later on. Once I got back to base, I watched the trapping movie to get me to level 4 and then just spent the remainder of the day reading volume 3. Since I wasn't able to finish the book and didn't want to destroy my sleep cycle again, I decided to wrap up volume 3 in the morning of day 358. So I'd actually stepped out to do some laundry, thinking I had time to change the loads real quick and then came back realizing that I'd set my speed to times 2 instead of normal. So this day was basically a wash as I just spent the majority of the day sitting in bed staring into space. Alright, time for some more combat. Day 359, I went looking for some action and found a candy store. After setting foot inside, I triggered an alarm, which was actually the first one I'd triggered since Rosewood. Can you believe that? Almost 200 days in Louisville, and this is my first alarm that I'd triggered here. It's insane to me. Now, Rosewood spear-wielding Preds would have been terrified and ran back to the base. But this is day 359 Preds, not day 9. So, I was ready to roll. Day 360 was spent roaming around Louisville just clearing out random buildings that I thought looked cool. I found myself near the baseball field and decided to stop in to watch it burn again. That's right, I'm still not over this. On day 361, I did the noble thing and gave a giant fuck you to the Lorax before slamming my car into a tree. If you're keeping track, please tell me how many cars that is because I've lost count by now. Alright. This next stretch includes one of my all-time favorite things to do in PZ. On day 362, I found an ambulance and had what is quite possibly the stupidest idea I've ever come up with. I know I'm not the first one to do this, I've seen thousands of videos on it, I actually used to do it myself in build 39, but I spent the remainder of the day setting up my trap and fell asleep in a neighboring building. On day 363, I finally kicked off the trap. This would be my test run for future endeavors and I wanted to see it on a smaller scale before potentially crashing my game. So. Here's the event, sped up, and with my old friend making a surprise appearance since you guys liked him so much. I've also received something like 150 plus DMs asking me to put it back in, so ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming my old friend, Dancing Doge.
This is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. Hope you enjoyed this masterpiece and now back to the episode day 364 was a break from the action i spent most of the day fishing and digging for more worms and if you want something to be excited about i hit fishing level three so cheers to that day 365 i woke up late and just spent the day working on mechanics some more nothing crazy just the same formula from the beginning of the episode also we've officially made it a year so that's pretty cool on 366, I spent some time organizing my storage shed and remembered I had a shit ton of arrows, so I decided to spend the next few days burning through my arrow count. Of, of course, I still had a WMD with that ambulance Molotov combo, so I decided I needed to step it up a notch. I had a plan, but it was a little too late in the day to do anything, so I spent the rest of my time just making as many arrows as possible before going to bed. In the morning of day 367, I woke up and drove out to the suburbs where I subsequently burnt down the entire neighborhood while also working on my bow skills. I rigged the same setup of blaring the siren and then dipping out behind some buildings, and this was a little easier than before since all of the houses were fenced in so I could just climb over them as long as I wasn't too exerted. It was a lot of fun, but I realized pretty quickly that archery was going to be a drag to level. Possibly the slowest active skill in the game, if I had to guess. I'm not sure but the benefits you get from leveling, but I'm hoping it's something like better headshot chance and a faster reload speed, Otherwise, we're going to have some problems later on when this is the last skill left for me and I have to figure out a way to grind out 8 levels when you get less than 1 XP per headshot. I had a couple skills that I was close to leveling, so I chose to commit to those. Specifically, long blunt and sprinting. Spent days 368 and 369 doing just that. It wasn't difficult by any means, and it basically followed the same premise of sprinting out to an area, finding a small group of zombies, killing them, resting, and repeating. On day 370, I finally hit mechanics skill 5, and spent the rest of the day just disassembling all of my electronic stuff. After that was finished, I geared up to fight before realizing I was at critical damage from not eating all day. Now if you're looking at this and thinking I'm a dumbass for letting this happen, you're spot on. But also, you gotta realize, I was still overweight, which really messes with your endurance, so I was really trying to starve myself into dropping the pounds, which this fat ass really struggled with apparently. Day 371 was spent harvesting all of my potatoes. Now it's time for me to finally admit, I may have gone a little overboard with the gardening fiasco. After harvesting all of the potatoes, I realized I had no space to put them, so I ran down to the mall and grabbed an industrial fridge to store them in, which still wasn't enough. So if you're thinking of that with some quick math, that's somewhere around 450 potatoes, or two ice freezers and an industrial fridge, and to still have not enough space for them. And to add on top of this, there was still the rooftop garden which had more potatoes in it. I spent 372 working on trapping, which is now basically an all-day event since I don't have a car to take me there. Well, at least not one that I'm willing to risk crashing into 15 trees. When I got back to base, I realized something. I'm starting to run into a non-serious, but kind of serious issue of having way too much food and not enough storage. I have hundreds of potatoes and rabbits and fish, but nowhere to put them right now. And it's driving me nuts because I wanted to lose weight because I'm overweight, but I also didn't want to lose all of the food. I, I don't know. It's stupid, but it's also something that's just super annoying to me for literally no reason of like watching food spoil and wasting that kind of stuff, even though I have an overabundance of it. And that's not even looking at my kitchen to the left of me, which is covered in food still. Someone in my Discord was talking about how the old pushing the tree exploit still worked, but for maintenance, and if you don't know what that is, basically in older builds, you could speed up time and level fitness and strength by pushing a tree, by standing next to a tree and pushing space or clicking with your left mouse button. Um, you could also speed up time during that, and it was a huge exploit since it wouldn't break the tree, but you could grind fitness very quickly with it. Finding out this could still work was pretty big for me, so I grabbed a hammer and tested it out for myself, and it looks like he's right. Now, it's a slow process since you have to basically speed up time in between each hit, which really drags on unless someone knows a workaround or if I'm just not doing it correctly. 
but I'll save that for another time. Just something cool to find out. Aside from that, I had a ton of weapons and I wanted to start burning through them. So I picked my weapon of choice. And for the first time in around 300 days, I started using spears again. I was also able to head back out and retrieve my red van from that parking lot I left in a couple days ago. 374 was a nice throwback day to part one. I spent the day burning through my massive spear collection. The nice nostalgia kick for me since I haven't used spears in combat in like 350-ish days and really since moving to Rosewood to be honest. And this time I wasn't just using base spears, I finally had the resources to be able to attach knives on the ends for some added damage. Couple that with the fact that my maintenance skill was above zero and it all added up to a really enjoyable experience. 375 was kind of a weird day. I had some nightmares so my guy was up at 1am and tired by 8am. My time in Louisville was coming to a close, and it was now time to start working on my vehicle to take me to the next destination. I decided the ambulance would be that car. I started this process by taking the battery out of the van and then repaired the hood of the ambulance before realizing that all of my tools are sitting at the mechanic shop that I made into a small FOB on the other end of the city. But too tired to risk it, I spent the rest of the day just working through my VHS collection, which leveled up my cooking for me, and then harvested the rest of the potatoes on the roof, which, let's be honest, it's mainly for the seeds at this point. On 376, I put the battery back into the van and made my way back down to the mechanic shop, looting it of basically every item that I thought held value to me. When I got back to base, I spent the rest of the day just scavenging all of the parts off the remaining cars in the mall parking lot, looking for anything that I could use to upgrade the ambulance in the slightest. Worst case, I could take the engine parts off any vehicle I passed, since the ambulance's engine was sitting at a whopping 13%. So here's the thing, I don't know how or when this happened. But if you look at the info tab, specifically the survived for section, you can see that it says one year, 18 days, and 21 hours. We'll round this up to one year and 19 days, which equates to 384 days, not 376. I'm not really sure where those days went since everything is pretty well documented. I keep a running spreadsheet of what I do each day for each 100 day episode. It's so like here's a sneak peek of what part four looks like. This is updated at the end of each day while I'm sleeping, so again, I'm not really sure where those days disappeared to, and if I had to guess, I would think it would happen during either part 1 or part 2 while I was working on any larger build projects that took multiple days. I'm just gonna have to be more diligent going forward. Sorry about that. But yeah, this really cuts down on the time that I've left since I just lost about 8 days of prep work, so I guess be prepared for a very action-packed final 15 days or so. 385 was generally the same as 376, or 384 if you want to be a dickhead about it. Just more of me scavenging stuff off of cars and the abandoned parking lot looking up for any useful parts and then taking the engine parts of every car I came across. I did get ambushed by a zombie at around 250. That took way too long to kill. Like, seriously. Way too long. By 5 p.m., the car was about as set as I was going to be able to get it, so I decided to switch gears and focus on loading the car, but that would wait until tomorrow. I spent the morning checking the traps again, which leveled up my trapping, but I decided not to take any of the meat back with me since I had literally no room for it anywhere. I spent the rest of the day just picking out items to move into the car. This wasn't going to be like Rosewood, where I set up a goddamn convoy and drove for like three full days at a whopping five miles an hour. No, no, no. I'm just taking what I can fit in the car. Now I know that's going to piss some people off because it's like, why the hell did you just make this big ass base and spend a bunch of time and add a bunch of this stuff to it if you're not going to hang around and use it all? And that answer is pretty simple. Uh, go fuck yourself. No, I'm just kidding. I was just getting bored of Louisville and I wanted to see some other sites. All of the gear I had here, the, you can replace it. I'd be able to find it in other places. So it's, it's not the end of the world. For items off the top of the list, I chose three spiked baseball bats for my melee weapons. Then I went through and grabbed some medical items, like sterilized bandages, suture needles, painkillers, all that stuff. Obviously, I'm bringing the M16, so I grabbed around 30 boxes of ammo, threw that in the trunk, along with 10 fully loaded mags and 4 molotovs. After that, I grabbed the Spaz-12 and a canister of 12 gauge shells. That's about it for weapons, aside from a pistol and some double stack mags that I could fit on my tack vest. Other items included things like a wood axe, a saw, a sledgehammer, all that fun stuff. Now, obviously, I had a shit ton of stuff here to burn through, so I figured I'd better start now. 
I had three axes between a fire station axe and two hand axes, so I decided to focus on those until they broke. Started collecting sweaters and jackets so that I could burn through my tailoring gear as well. I also found a new dance book, but whenever I tried to read it, zombies kept coming up to me, so I had to take it back to the base and test it out. Day 388 was much of the same, mindlessly roaming the city searching for zombies, wiping them out, and then going back home. Only thing really worth noting is I leveled up my axe skill, which was pretty cool. But here is where you can start to see the wear and tear of 200 days in a city, even like Louisville, even the size of Louisville, right? After 200 days, if you don't want to risk driving your car out, and I know a lot of you aren't like me and you don't total 20 different cars in 400 days, but when you only have one car left, you're not willing to risk driving that out and getting it lost in a horde. So I was spending a lot of time walking several hours in one direction, fighting for a couple hours, and then being forced to walk all the way back. So it I know it sounds like you have all this time to really fight through hordes of zombies at your will, but in reality, once you clear out their, the initial area, you don't have a lot of stuff to do. So a lot of this is me searching for hordes to find or trying my best to gather up as many zombies as possible before burning through my tools. 389 was a textbook definition of poor time management. Spent the morning doing some tailoring, or at least what I thought would only be the morning, but ended up being most of the day burning through my tailoring resources. By that time, I realized it was a little too late in the day to do any combat, so I dumped all my cooking pots and started meal prepping from scratch again. 390 was also spent cooking, just another grindy day now that we're in the home stretch. After wrapping that up, I started doing suicides by the water to work on my sprinting levels. Started off day 391 with some more sprinting, but realized really quickly that it's super boring and decided to go mess around with weapons again. Spent the rest of 391 and all of 392 just roaming the streets looking for small hordes to burn through. The whole time I was doing this, I started to feel a little overwhelmed with the fact that I had literally four shelves of weapons that I would never get to touch as I realized I was nearing the end of my time in Louisville. You might think, we'll just stay a little while longer and leave in a couple more weeks or so. And that's a fair argument, but I just like to keep everything tight, and I think 200 days here, while maybe not enough to fully experience everything LV has to offer, is more than enough time for me to get a little sick of seeing the same sights every day. So I thought I only had three axes, but when I was going through the storage shelves, I found five more axes. So I tried to make the most of the time I had left here and went on a mini rampage. A couple hours in, I found a weapons locker in a random building I ducked into and found an RPG in it, and had an immediate realization that I had a rocket back at base that would fit just perfectly with this. Now, wanting to pump in some excitement, I grabbed the RPG, loaded the rocket, decided to see what kind of crazy shit I could do with it. I figured the best course of action would be to round up a small horde, and then bring them into a building to light them up, so I got to work. Around 1040, I'd put the RPG away because my cat was laying in front of my keyboard and I didn't want him to click on my mouse for me and accidentally fire an RPG into a zombie two feet away from me. I know it sounds ridiculous, but he's done it before. So I finally got to fire off the RPG, and it was kind of a buzzkill, to be honest. Like, yeah, the fire was cool, and I got to burn down a building, which is always fun, but I gotta say, like, I was expecting a little bit bigger explosion. So maybe next time, I don't know. On day 395, I decided to dedicate the entire day just to sprinting, so I could check that off the list. I had a pretty good system down where I could click to walk and hold on the far end so that by the time you reach the corner, you could release the click and I'd run all the way back to the other end. And I also moved a chair out there for when I hit exertion so I could rest. Finally leveled up in the late afternoon and then nothing interesting happened after that. So on to the next day. Decided to have one last day of complete chaos. So I grabbed a bunch of Molotovs, a gun with a 50 round mag, turned the sirens on and cruised through the streets of Louisville at a whopping five miles an hour until I gathered a big enough audience. Now my favorite thing to do is to kite a horde of zombies that are on fire into buildings and then watch the destruction completely unfold. We did a couple loops and then routed them as close to the building as possible so that it eventually catch.
Next, I turned my attention to Spiffos. And after hitting the salsa in front of the godly mascot standing in front of me, I burned the building to the ground. Satisfied with my work for the day, I headed back to base and tried to pound out that next fishing level so I could cram in that book before leaving. 397 was spent digging more furrows to get worms. And once I had enough, I went right back to fishing. Nothing crazy, just more grinding until my second pole had lost its line. I didn't want to commit to using all of my fishing line, so I decided to try spear fishing again. And I was hoping that this time it'd be a little bit different since I had a couple levels and was using a spear with a bread knife and it did seem to make a difference since I could actually catch pretty decent sized fish which was a relief. This was one of those things where I was exhausted and if it was any other day I would have just picked it up the next morning but being it was day 398 I wanted to pound it out and give myself as much time as possible to read and gear up for the trip still. So I decided to fish through the night to hit level 4 at around 6am. Coincidentally, I also leveled up my cooking by filleting all of the fish that I was catching, so I decided to spend all of 399 reading as much as I could until I realized that I didn't have either of the books I needed. So back to the library. I couldn't find cooking 5, so I decided to cut my losses and focus on knocking out fishing. Now, looking back, I should have known that I wasn't going to find volume 5 for cooking since I had already looked for it in the same exact spot about 50 days ago. Whoops. I'm sure I'd find it eventually, I mean, we're not even halfway through this series yet and I've got some time. But day 400 was bittersweet, as each 100 days tends to be here. This was one of my favorite bases that I'd ever created in Project Zomboid. And I know it wasn't super complex and it was relatively basic, but I enjoyed my time on top of the mall. Louisville in and of itself was an experience that I'd never forget. The last 200 days were some of the most fun I've ever had in a video game. I'm excited for what the next chapter is going to bring. Before embarking on my next journey, I decided to give the infamous mall the only send off I could think of. Fitting, don't you think? All right, folks, with part four in the books, I think it's time for another heartfelt thank you. So it's going to get sappy. So if you don't like that kind of shit, you can dip out. I promise you're not going to miss anything. You probably already heard me say it a thousand times to you. I'm going to say it a thousand more. The last few months have been such an experience, and I'm just beyond thankful for every moment of it. Uh, less than two months ago, I had about 350 subs. So it's hard to believe that at the time of writing this, we're right on the cusp of 15,000, which is just an insane number for me to think about. Um, on top of that, we also just hit a million channel views, which I don't even know how to comprehend that. Uh, that, that was kind of my first really big goal after, after part one success. And I didn't think it would come in 2022, let alone in March of 2022. Um, so thank you. This has been some of the most fun that I've ever had in video games. And not only am I able to make content that you guys enjoy and that you watch and, and hang out with me for, but I get to meet and play with all of you guys and everyone in the Discord, which is awesome. And that's why I started the channel. So the community events that we host on Fridays are something that I look forward to doing every single week. And it sounds a little cliche and stupid to say that, but I genuinely look forward to doing them on Fridays. They're some of the most fun experiences I've had in the past couple months. And there's something that I hope continues into the future. And I truly can't thank you guys enough for giving me that. I'm looking forward to the remainder of this series and what comes next after it. There's some pretty big things in the works and I hope you enjoy the future ideas as much as this series. But if not, I'm just gonna enjoy the ride for while it lasts. But yeah, I just wanted to say thank you for this because sometimes I feel like I don't say it enough even though I, I'm sure people get annoyed at me for it, but thank you. And until next time, thanks for stopping by.